There are many excellent choices of instruments used to articulate dental casts and simulate jaw movements. Unfortunately, oftentimes they're more complicated than they need to be for most procedures. The COIS Dental Facial Analyzer System was developed as a joint effort between the Panadent Corporation and myself to create a more simplified instrumentation technique to relate dental casts into an articulator. This system was designed exclusively for the Panadent Articulator. The purpose of a face bow registration is to relate the patient's maxillary arch to their face in three planes of space. This relationship is twofold. One, for dental facial analysis of the maxillary arch, and another for the establishment of functional relationships with the mandibular arch. Historically, systems focused on one or the other, not both simultaneously. Previous research has cited the inherent errors and complications of these procedures. Currently, all earbow techniques transfer an arbitrary or average hinge axis location by referencing an approximation using the patient's ears. Mathematically, although imprecise, this approximation is within an acceptable range for dental articulation, especially when minimal to moderate changes are necessary in the dentition. There are greater concerns, however, when the occlusal vertical dimension needs to be altered. In addition, the aesthetic information i.e. the maxillary occlusal plane, may be transferred improperly if the patient's ears are uneven or the third point of reference is inappropriate. These concerns will slant the maxillary arch incorrectly left to right, transverse plane, or front to back, sagittal plane. Research I have recently completed using males and females of different ethnicity indicates a hinge axis to maxillary incisal distance averaging 100.21 millimeters. 85 percent of this patient population encompass a range within five millimeters above or below this average axis. From a historical perspective this 100 millimeter distance is collaborated by Bonwell's equilateral triangle and Monson's spherical theory. This new system utilizes the 100 millimeter average simultaneously with aesthetic orientation for a truly simplified approach to the previous procedures necessary to position dental casts accurately in the Panadent articulator. There is no longer a need to reference from the patient's ears or select an arbitrary third point of reference on the nose. Armamentarium necessary would be some mechanism to heat the compound or wax tabs. The FACEBO system itself is actually quite simple, which includes a horizontal bow, which is very similar to a fox guide plane. The vertical rod, which can be positioned in the horizontal component. And the use of a disposable tray system. The Panadent bite tabs are positioned on the tray. Usually, four is more than enough. The tray is then inserted into either a water bath or a mixing bowl with hot water. The vertical rod is then positioned on the bow.
it doesn't take very long for the wax or the compound to be sufficiently soft to then apply the tray to the bow. All that is necessary is the tray is clipped into the face bow and make sh making sure that the tray is completely seated in the bow. The patient then grabs the tray and we guide it into the mouth. The only key step here is to let the little vertical component on the tray bump the central incisal edge and then the face bow is positioned in the patient's face and then the vertical rod is centered right over the glabella. With the patient sitting erect, the horizontal plane can be verified by both the vertical rod and the bioaesthetic level. In the sagittal plane, the face bow can be also checked by rotating the bubble level to the side and ensuring that the vertical rod is also perpendicular to the bow. Notice we have the rod positioned perfectly vertical in the patient's face. In addition, not only is it vertical, it's positioned precisely along the facial midline, not the dental midline. Notice also the bubble is perfectly positioned in the center. Notice from the frontal plane, the patient's position in the chair is not as critical. However, from the sagittal plane, it's important that the patient is sitting as erect as possible in the chair because arbitrarily tipping the head too far back or too far forward would make an error in the positioning of the bow. In doing it this way, what will happen is you would ensure that the occlusal plane is transferred to the articulator more accurately the way it looks in the patient's face. It's removed. It's so much easier because we don't have anything in the patient's ears. It's as l much less cumbersome. Patient acceptance is much easier. And as you see, there are no screws required to position this bow, and so there are no additional tools necessary for this procedure. In preparation for mounting to the Panadent articulator system, a few initial steps must be verified. Number one, the pin must be set at zero. In addition, the centric latch must be engaged. The adjustable mounting platform is set at the zero position on the index. To achieve that, it's simply loosen the set screw and then the mounting platform can be moved up or down merely by turning the screw. Once you're in the zero position, the set screw can then be retightened. The pins that stick down in the tray must be now positioned over the holes. Once they're positioned over the holes, the tray can be fully inserted into the adjustable mounting platform. The platform is then simply moved over to the magnetic mounting plate and positioned on the articulator. The opposing magnetic plate is inserted into the upper member. The maxillary cast is positioned into the indentations on the platform. Mounting stone can be added to the mounting plate and at the same time mounting stone can be added to the upper cast. The articulator is merely closed in this position and remember the pin is at the zero mark. The cast is held in position until the stone reaches its initial set. Notice the adjustable mounting platform becomes a built-in support stand for the mounting procedure. Once the mounting stone has set, 
it's important not to attempt to open the articulator. The vertical wall in the maxillary tray interferes with the maxillary cast. Forceful opening at this point may create some breakage in the maxillary cast. Simply by releasing the centric latch, the articulator can now be lifted right out of the maxillary tray. The adjustable mounting platform can now be removed and replaced by the magnetic mounting plate. In order to complete mounting of the mandibular cast, the panadent mounting stand is positioned over the Dynalink pins. The incisal pin is increased two millimeters to account for the usual thickness of the inner occlusal record. An additional unique feature about the panadent mounting system is the ability to adjust the support pin. In this way, the support pin can be adjusted so the mandibular cast is now lowered so that it is perfectly level to minimize any stone that may drip down the back onto the articulator. The lower member of the articulator is merely now closed into position once the mounting stone has been added. Upon completion of the mandibular mounting, this cast can be removed from the articulator. The standard waxing guide is positioned over the adjusting mounting platform, which is now repositioned back onto the articulator. Once the pin is reset to zero, the position of the maxillary incisal edge has been recorded exactly. In addition, the maxillary occlusal plane can be visualized in terms of how level it is in the face, both left to right and front to back. If the clinician has decided to increase the length of the maxillary incisal edge, two millimeters, the dial gauge is now positioned two millimeters more open. The set screw is then tightened and now the technician can see exactly what change is necessary in the entire maxillary occlusal plane to accommodate the change. This provides simplified communication to the laboratory technician or as part of a diagnostic protocol to other disciplines. For instance, communication with orthodontists, orthognathic surgeons, the ability to create harmonious and symmetrical tissue levels, with the periodontist, all can be communicated now. For instance, in this particular patient, there is a slight alteration in the dental midline relative to the face. The maxillary occlusal plane is relatively level in the patient's face, and these are easily visualized with the use of the dental facial analyzer. In addition, there are seven different pre-printed waxing guides that can be positioned on the adjustable mounting platform. The seven different guides have been determined based on different widths of the central incisor. These guides are also reusable. The maxillary cast now can be repositioned into the golden proportion guide and then the proportions can be pre-visualized prior to making any changes. An optional part of the procedure, but many times an integral part of the procedure, is to understand how facial proportions can relate to the positioning of the teeth in a patient's face. The use of the vertical rod that you'll see in just a moment can be positioned by the patient's face 
using the white thumb screw area positioned under the incisal edge and the little black rings that are supplied with the vertical rod to annotate the exact thirds of the face that can be broken apart. For instance, we have the lower third of the face, we have the middle third of the face, and we have the upper third of the face. The ring can be moved out of the way so that the golden proportion can be aligned with the little black rings that are placed on the vertical rod. In this way, the practitioner would have some idea which direction to go in order to create changes in facial proportion. Height of lip commissures can also be indicated in the chart and measured off the tray to be utilized for positioning cervical margins of teeth. This would be especially valuable when considering crown lengthening in the maxillary arch, especially in the posterior sections, and also for complete denture fabrication. This can be re-verified by coming back and positioning the gauge in the same position it was positioned in the mouth. A mark can be annotated on the cast, verifying the position of the lips. Several unique features about the Panadent Articulator should be mentioned at this time. One, the Dynalinks positioned on the outsides of the condylar blocks allow the condyle on the articulator to precisely track on the medial wall during movements. These condylar motion analogs have been designed to capture six degrees of freedom based on patients' true mandibular movements. The centric latch allows for a positive centric relation. Once the centric latch is released, the cast can be moved through excursive movements simply by manipulating the incisal pin. The Panadent is one of the few instruments that allows 180 degree complete opening. The second pin in the upper member is a support pin to support the upper member when it's fully opened. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,